this week. Oh my God. English traveller Tony is having trouble with the neighbours. They're worried about it turning into a gypsy caravan, so I... A High Court injunction has stopped him in his tracks. The shed's got to come down! I can't believe this! English traveller Carol is no stranger to negative comments. A lot of people come around and say, yeah, you're scum, gypsies are scum. And she's had enough. Come on, look how far the houses are away. How are we disturbing them three fields over? And Andrea has convinced husband Johnny to move. But I'm still a traveller man at the end of the day, and I'll never, ever change. Never. I don't think it's going to be long, really, before the people get here and uh, start complaining. Nuneaton, a quiet market town in Warwickshire, with strong and vocal local residents. Oh, it's lovely. People are lovely. Salt of the earth. We've got desperados like any other town, but uh, people are lovely. Recently, the talk of the town has been the arrival of a group of travellers on the local leisure centre car park. But it's not the first time Nuneaton has had visitors. We've had them on various bits of land round here. We knew we were the next in line. On some of the sites, they've used angle grinders to cut barriers away. It's extremely organised. It's not just like normal litter. It's just everything from... And the worst is obviously like the human poo you find. Everybody's fed up of it because it's been going on for five years. All activities stop when the gypsies get here. There's nothing random about them. It's an invasion. Nuneaton resident Arthur has seen just how angry people have become. Uh, get the local farmers to fertilise them with their shit flingers. Uh, there's one there, it just simply says, hate pikeys. It only takes one person to do something stupid because that's what society does when they're being constantly threatened. They're going to bite back, aren't they? There we go. Burn the caravans. I don't want that to happen. It was posts like that that motivated me to start up my petition to stop the recurring traveller encampments now. I wasn't prepared to just go on the Facebook, you know, have a moan and leave it there. I'd much rather try and do something. Shh. There are some questions I've got. Not saying all travellers do that, but why are they that destructive? I want an accurate picture of who they are, what they do, why they do it, and just see if I can get them to talk to me. Fifty miles up the road, English traveller Carol and her family have pulled on the roadside for a few days. This idea, yep, the travellers need to permanently move out of Nighton as they are taking over our public land on a regular basis. She's also seen the comments from the Nuneaton locals. That's not us, Dad, that's a bigger group. That ain't us. We'll be tarred for that now. Yeah, and they got better trainers than us. Yeah. Carol and her family live a quiet life and don't travel with larger groups. I'm going to do a meat pudding today. Every man likes that put on the plate every Sunday, yeah. Meanwhile, what are the men up to? Uh, what are they doing? <laughs> Sitting around mainly talking a load of shit, so yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I need to go to the comments on there. They get away with criminal damage and we are as taxpayers have to pick up the bill. Sick of the cost. Well, we're sick of the bloody cost as well, mate. Of moving well, up and down. Yeah. Can't settle nowhere. Where do you want us to stop then? Where would you like us to go? We don't want to trespass, but as a sign of Bible, forgive those who trespass against us. So forgive us for trespassing, That's gorgeous, right now, isn't it? But we yeah. don't mean to. <laughs> we have nowhere else to go, exactly. isn't it? Yeah. Get rid of the Jippo bastard scum. Now, that is disgusting, isn't it? Yes. Are we scum? Exactly. They are not fit to be called human beings. Time to get rid of once and for all. So there's no winning, is there? No. There's just no winning with them. The comments on Facebook are like, oh, the scum, you should go there and burn the caravans, or... That really upsets me. Because, obviously, when you've got kids in there, you want to keep them safe, but how can you keep them safe? Because you've got to keep awake after night to make sure that the caravan don't get burnt and the kids are safe, so it's wrong. Scarlett, can you put that rubbish out for me, Angel? English traveller Johnny is married to Andrea, who's from the Settle community. They live in a chalet on their own site in Essex, with their three children, Scarlett, Jack Joe and Bobby. Bobby, want to go on your motorbike? 
Johnny's always wanted his children to have the same experience he did growing up on a traveller site. I want them to live freer. They've got more land, there's no horses around, and they drive motors around. Go steady, don't race, go steady, no, no! You couldn't do that if you lived in an house up the street. But with their eldest son recently moving to a secondary school, Johnny and Andrea are preparing to make a life-changing decision. I want to get them to school in what they need. You know, give them the best chance that I never had. Can I have a go? After five years living on the site, Andrea has had enough. Oh. She misses the ease of her former life. We can't get broadband, we can't get pizza delivered, we can't get electric. It's just completely out of order. Complete and utter discrimination at the end of the day. That's what it is, discrimination. Yeah. Yeah. Do you know why they don't deliver down there, mate? Yeah, it's just a bit of a nightmare, isn't it? I have to drive seven miles a day to come get the post. I mean, this really does piss me off. Because when I lived in the house, you, you could get everything you wanted. You just ring up on the phone and you get whatever you want. They don't make you feel good. It makes you feel like a second-class citizen, really. Right, girls? I know John don't want to move from here. He loves it here. He's lived here all his life. But he's making that sacrifice for us and for his children. Today, Andrea's brought Johnny to take a look at the house that they'll be moving into in two weeks' time. Look what she's moved me into. What? Look. What am I going to do? I'm going to slide around that rep room like a seal, aren't I? <laughs> Johnny's beginning to warm to the move, but he has one condition. He wants to bring what he loves most from the site. Well, John, because he's a lunatic, he thinks that we can have the horse in the garage and if it was down to me, I'd keep it where it was. Having grown up on a residential street, Andrea knows how important first impressions are. The only problem I've got with this is the neighbours. Right. Because it's not every day, because yeah. this is a residential street. We're not on a traveller site now, yeah? Yeah. I don't know if you understand, but these people are probably not going to be happy with this, John. Why not? You look down the street, how many people have got their hogs in the garage? No one has, have they? This is the difference between gypsies and gorgeous, isn't it? What makes the difference? Because, John, people just don't do this. To be on the safe side, Andrea invites the new neighbours round to run the idea by them. He wants to bring his horse back here. Oh! Yeah. He don't understand that if you bring the horse here and put the horse in the garage, I don't think you're going to understand the reaction you're going to get from the neighbours. Will you be all right with that? Oh, yeah. I, don't, I think you're actually mad. <laughs> <laughs> It is such a, an extreme thing to do, to like, have a horse in your garage. It's not normal. But not to be deterred, Johnny is sizing up the new stable. Once that horse is in there, I'd find myself coming out that house and probably sitting in there with that horse. Cos I just feel like sometimes I'm, I'm a bit closed in, you know? Yeah. Nuneaton resident Arthur is fed up of unauthorised encampments in his hometown. Middle of the siege. He's come across Carol's camp and he's got an idea. I'm going to approach the travellers, being respectful, being polite, and then go from there. How are you? My name's Arthur. Yeah, Spencer. How are you? Then. Right, listen, I'm, I'm, I'm just travelled up from the Neaton because I want to... Well, how do I put it? For the last three or four years, we've had a really bad experience with the travellers there. It's always the same behaviour. Lots of rubbish, lots of human waste, sometimes smudged all over the place. My image of travellers is only from what these people have done to us. I don't want to paint everybody with the same brush. But if I was to say to you, that a group of travellers left human poo everywhere and smeared it up buildings. What would you say to that? I'd say that's disgusting. So don't get me wrong there. Yes, we do go to the toilet in the hedge, but we don't do it all over the land. Do the caravans have toilets in nope. them at all? No. If I had a toilet in that, 
why because and in a house you're in different sections isn't you well in that you've got to put all your blankets all your bedding in that isn't it your poo in the caravan no no full stop is that a traveler tradition yeah if you did have to poo in the caravan people talk about me think oh look at her she goes and uses the, the, the uh, rhyme as a toilet ah right okay so it's unclean then yeah this is how we live. We are we we are. We're not going to make up with someone we're not. We are cheeky. I will admit we are cheeky going on people's land. But we do respect people's land. Some come and say don't. I'll put the rubbish there. I do put the rubbish there and the cows do take it. Don't judge a book by its cover. That's what they're doing to us. A lot of people come around and say, yeah, you're scum. Gypsies are scum and whatever. I'm, we're not scum. Have you had that happen to you? Yeah, it's gone. But then you get picked on because you're not the same as all the other children. So. That's why I ended up dropping out. So I got Billy picked on, so I thought, what's the point in staying there? So I just left. Right. The villagers, obviously, as soon as someone come and comes on, they're on the Facebook, yeah? I'll lock up this or lock away that. But why? You don't even know me. That's interesting, because in Nuneaton, that's exactly what's happened, because yeah. the camps rock up. Right there and then, in that instant, is the hostility. They might not have even done anything yet. All they've done is just break into somewhere and trespass. Yeah. They haven't actually shit on the green yet. No, I understand, like, a lot of travellers do disrespect the villagers, but it doesn't mean we're the same. But I will admit, yeah, sometimes when we go in places, we do cut a lock off, you know what I mean? Go on, let's have a look at what's in the pot. Oh, my God, what you got in there? That's a pheasant. Oh, wow. He hit that with a cut. Roadkill. Yeah, yeah. roadkill, so I just stopped, pulled over, got it. Well, I could save me food, bill of fortune, yeah. couldn't I? <laughs> Saves money, doesn't it? <laughs> Listen, I've got to go. I've got my dinner waiting for me. That's making me flipping hungry, that is. It was a pleasure talking yeah, to you, you all right? Pleasure, pleasure, boss, all right? Pleasure, sweetheart, all right? Well, that was interesting, to say the least. They're so far removed from the picture I have in my head at the moment of what a traveller is. So I'm just left with the question, well, what's different between the group that invades Nuneaton and the very respectful family that I've just spoken to now? All right. If this was your bit of ground here and you come here and be nasty towards me, then I'd leave it as a tip. For them to leave the camp like that, there's got to be a reason. They must have had a lot of discrimination, so that's why they've left it the way they've left it. English traveller Tony lives on a permanent traveller site in Virginia Water, Surrey. Sod's lower, isn't it? He lives alone in his two bedroom chalet next door to his mum's. These are me and my brothers. That was my dad there, that was years ago. He's not married, but he has started a family of his own. I've got five kids, three with one lady and two with the other. I'm early 30s now, and I've lived a very colourful life. Tony was with ex-partner Danielle on and off for eight years. The reason me and Tony haven't worked is because he's a traveller and I'm a non-traveller. He tries to fit in my world, but I don't fit in his world. He craves the family life, but he's never really settled. But that's about to change. I've got a chalet ordered. It's uh, nearly 50 foot long, it's got three bedrooms, lovely home. The whole reason for it is for my kids. If I could get them nice homes, a nice future, then I've done a good job. He's found a plot of land large enough for his new chalet. But it means leaving the gypsy site and living next door to the settled community, or gorges, as travellers call them. My granddad was living on that yard 34 years ago. He did always say that he wished he would have stayed there, so that's the reason that I wanted to go back there. The land is now owned by family friend, millionaire businessman Colin, who's not a traveller. I've known Tony now for four years. He is one of the nicest people you've ever come across. Colin, he's not a traveller, but a very good mate of mine, very close friend. He wants to have a base for his children. He wants to settle down, so that's all he needs. Collins let Tony keep an old chalet there, and the one for the kids is due for delivery. With the yard situated on a quiet residential road, Tony is hoping his new neighbours will welcome him. 
it's worrying for some people. Obviously, they hear that you're a gypsy and may think, oh, I've got to live next door to that guy. Well, yeah, hopefully that should be cool. The arrival of the new chalet is imminent. Another eventful day. So Tony and Colin are heading for a final check of the yard. I hope it goes well. They come up. I've got you on my side. Oh, my God. Look here. I can't believe it. The plan was to get the new chalet and I've got it on the back. It's come down from Bristol on the back of a lorry, got an escort. We've got it here this morning so we can take this one out and put the new one in. And we've now got to go to high court over... Um, Another victimisation. Yes, over one of the neighbours complaining over it. They're, they're, they're worried about it being a... turning into a gypsy caravan site. Oh, my God. Look, on the lorry, on the caravan. The council say they have no direct dealings with Tony, and it has nothing to do with the fact that he is a traveller. Look at that. High cool. The injunction, they say, is because they need to prevent the development of the land as an unauthorised caravan site. Disgusting. It's just not right. The neighbours will start putting complaints in behind my back. They should have come over, speak to me and tell me their problem. Could be one of all of them. Could be anyone, really. I do find it a little bit offensive. And they're using our culture as an excuse for me not to live there. The locals state that the land shouldn't be developed by anyone for a host of environmental reasons. All Tony needs is to be given a chance to be accepted, because he doesn't ever get accepted. To him, it's a dig at him personally. Tony is now left with a more pressing problem one that's heading down the lane right now. What am I going to do with the other chalet? The other chalet, I have to go to your mum's. Pull down the other one. So I'm going to have to get a grab lorry in there to take the other one down that I've lived in since the age of eight. Oh, my God. The shed's got to come down! Oh, I can't believe this! Oh, God. <laughs> with their big moving day just around the corner, yeah. Andrea and Johnny are back on the site. Just got a plug in for me. And today's their son Jack Joe's 11th birthday. <sighs> I'm just waiting for the electric to come back on because it's gone again and we're in a bit of a hurry because we need to be leaving in a little while. In the past, Jack Joe has always thrown two birthday parties. One at home with his traveller friends and a separate one for his gorgeous friends from school. But for the first time, he's decided to invite everyone to one big party. But Andrea and Johnny are worried that his school friends may not be comfortable visiting the site. He's all gorgeous friends. I don't know if they'll turn back up here later or not, but hopefully they will. I didn't sleep too good last night, so I was a bit worried about today. I just want it all to go well for, for him, you know? Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think you will. Oh, electric's back on. Eee, I can iron. Are you boxing? Oh, you ready for base jump? But there's a reason that the parents of Jack Joe's classmates might be in two minds. They live next door to the notorious Dale Farm, which is now just derelict land. As soon as it comes up Dale Farm, it's straight away, whoa, biggest gypsy camp in Europe. We ain't going down there, no way. That's how they see it. In 2011, 80 families were evicted from land they owned but did not have planning permission for. You'd only see something like this in a war zone. Why? It cost the council over four million pounds and made headlines across the world. Remaining hopeful. Travellers be gorgeous. The first half of the party is being held at a trampoline park up the road, seven miles away from the site. Gorgeous on that side and travellers on that side. While Jack, Joe and his friends are working up an appetite... Well, I'm already out of breath. Andrea and Johnny are trying to draw up interest for the after party back at theirs. Are you coming? Are you going to bring your boy back? Well, Jack. We've got some food in that back home. Um, some loads of sweets and things for the kids. So if you just fancy it, coming back home. Good morning and welcome. It'll be even better this time, cos all my friends from school and that are going to be here as well, so I'll have more people to play with. Back in Nuneaton, and after meeting Carol and her family on the road, Arthur has decided to swing by the group of travellers still camped outside the leisure centre. But this time, he doesn't feel comfortable stopping for a chat. 
It was immediately suspicious when I just rocked up on the motorbike and I was looking at the camp, you know, there was a bit of curtain twitching going on. My friend got beaten up by one of the gypsies from this camp. So I just got out. Carol and her family, they were approachable, you know? The difference here was chalk and cheese. Absolutely chalk and cheese. Get that camera, shove it over a hole, now and go. Now get the camera and go now. Because I told you, go now. I'm literally arrived today for news, mate. Go get the camera and go now. Are you right. deaf? I heard you. I heard you. Local residents have made numerous complaints of antisocial behaviour since these travellers arrived. Arthur feels the blame lies partly at the council's feet. We're the residents. It's us they're supposed to be serving and protecting, and that's not happening. Right. Good morning, everyone. Um, thank you for coming at fairly short notice as well. So in terms of cost of the, the clean-up operation of Pingles, have we got an idea of both office of time and kind of physical cost of what that's likely to be? I don't know. Nuneaton Council have had lots of practice dealing with unauthorised traveller encampments. It is frustrating in terms of the amount of time that it, that it takes us to, to deal with the situation. We have to serve notice, go to court, go back to the encampment, serve those court directions, then book the bailiffs to, to go and do the eviction. Having secured a court order, Simone is hopeful that it will lead to a successful eviction. Hi, Paul. We've served the court order today and booked the eviction for tomorrow. If they move off, the, the rest of the vehicles move off at some point today, have you got a clean-up team ready to move in? Quite often, travellers will move on before the eviction has to take place, but, but not always. With the trampolining over, the party moves back to Jack Joe's site. There's half a tank of petrol in it. Where Johnny and Andrea can surprise Jack Joe with his birthday present. His very own car. It seems best friend Harrison is impressed. He wants a car like you. Oh, I'll teach you how to drive. <laughs> yeah, well, you can teach me. Later you on, when I get my puncture done, I'll take, can you drive all I'm at? You can't drive anything. <laughs> Unfortunately, unlike Harrison, only a few of Jack Joe's school friends were able to come back in the end. Who likes seafood? After the party and that, we asked everyone to come back to the site here. The people I know a little bit better, they said yes, they will come back, and I knew they would come back, but the ones I don't really know, not one of them come back. But, you know, at the end of the day, that's up to them. They might be a bit nervous, it might be that. I just want them to realise you can come here, no matter where you're a traveller or gorgeous, it doesn't make any difference. Yeah. I've got children who's half travellers, half gorgeous. We all can get on. Give us a chance, we can get on. Well, I'm glad that my friend Harrison come back, but the other people, they couldn't come because they had things to do. But I'm happy with my car, it's the first car I've had. So today's been all right. So, mate, I might have a couple of Buckman Palace. Right, come then. <laughs> in Essex, I'm sweet, I'm. Andrea, Johnny, and the family are moving into a house. You excited, Jack? Yeah. yeah, you excited? But it's the first time their youngest, Bobby, has lived in a two-storey home, and it'll take some getting used to. Do you want to show him your room, Bobby? There's no stairs to worry about in a caravan. He's got to get used to it. The house is only a mile up the road from their traveller site, but for Johnny, it's worlds away. I ain't used to this age. Eh? I think, I think I'm going to go back to the trailer. <laughs> because I'm a traveller, man, I'm not used to living in houses. Sometimes, when I walk in there and then doors are shut, I just feel like I want to walk out and talk to somebody, what I've done all my life. It is a different way of life, living in a house. You get some houses where there's other travellers, but obviously here, there's no other travellers here. It's just me. But Johnny has plans to bring a little bit of travel alive to the new neighbourhood. I bet you this whole sailing in here for more than a week before we've got to move it out. You watch. You're probably right, but we'll give it a go. Do you clean windows? I want mine done. Yeah, how much do you charge? I'll tell you what I'm doing, see if you think it's weird or not, yeah? I've got an horse, right? Yeah. And I want to put her in my garage. What do you reckon? 
But do you think that's weird to have an horse in your garage or what? It's different. It's different. I'm not going to say that more than that. Cheers, mate. Cheers, mate. Okay. Thank you. Unlike Johnny, Andrea grew up on a residential street and she's worried about their first impressions on the new neighbours. When you look down the street here, how many people's got horses? Not many people. So I'm thinking people's going to complain and I think it's going to go viral like on Facebook. John is his own person. He does whatever he wants to do and don't care what anyone else thinks. Whereas me, like, I've been brought up to be a bit more reserved and I worry about what people think. <laughs> Travellers don't care. They just do whatever. English traveller Carol is back on the road again, and this time she stopped in Cambridgeshire. There's the coffee there, bud. And Carol's convinced the family will get the same reception they get from local residents everywhere. Oh, the gypsies are in town. Lock away your um, kids, your um, your wife. Lock down everything that's not bolted down because they're going to take everything. The scum are in town. After years of being made to feel unwelcome. Carol's learned to be suspicious of any local resident she meets. Excuse me. Are you picking up the rubbish, yeah? Who left that gypsy? Uh, I don't know. No, because I'm the gypsy and I stopped here. Apparently, you thought they lived in the village. Put on Facebook, you picked up 20 bags of rubbish here. And we backed every bit of rubbish up and left it right there. You have been on that Facebook and said that I shit yeah, in that whoa, head. Whoa, 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 whoa. I'm not even on Facebook. No, but a lot, of it, a, lot of the a lot of the villages around there, that's what they've been doing. Yeah, like, like, they've so been as well. Seeing that bit, picking up the Yeah, that's what we do. Yeah, but that's, that's what we've all. been doing. He wasn't chatful, was he? See, see now that basket of rubbish, because we're here, they were going to scatter that around and say it was us again that had dropped it off. That's, so you know you're seeing it for your own self what they do. We just went out for a walk and uh, we were just walking around the village and we just saw some litter and saw the basket so we thought we'll pick it up and put it in the recycle. It wasn't planted. If I see a bottle, I'll put it in the recycling. It's just uh, taking a bit of pride in where you live, I think. Harmless OCD, yeah. <laughs> in Virginia Water, Surrey, Tony's plans to live on his friend's yard in a residential street have been scuppered by a High Court order. Now the High Court injunction says you can't bring any more caravans on the site. There was no conversation, it was straight to hardball. Give me them gloves, brother. Nothing was meant to upset the neighbours, nothing was meant to upset the council. But to talk would have been a lot easier. If there was enough spaces for the gypsies to live, this problem wouldn't be there. According to official figures from 2017, <coughs> Fewer than a third of the required gypsy and traveller pitches have been built across England. The new chalet is now being unloaded in a temporary yard, but has to be removed in 48 hours. So Tony has had to make a tough decision. I had to rip uh, it's like a room that I've lived in since I've been eight years of age. Uh, me and my dad built it. My dad's not here now, God bless his soul. He died. You know what? New yard, what I've got down the road. They won't let me move on now, because they said I've got to go to court first. Other people and gypsies, they're actually kind of equal because they're the same persons, but they just got different blood. We're all the same in this world. They just keep doing it to us. I think it's really unfair for them. Why can't they just act nice to us? In the face of opposition from the locals, Tony's dream of starting a new life at the yard could be over before it's even begun. You can't get no more gypsy than this, can you? Basically worked all my life to have enough money to buy my own place and to bring my own family up. I'm not on a site around loads of other travellers. I wanted to bring them up my way. It really tries to pull it together and tries to do the right things by everyone. But I kind of like his chalet being on his mum's because I know that his mum's there. Not that I don't trust Tony, because Tony's very good with children, because he's a big kid himself. But um, it's just a bit of a safety net for me. As long as he's willing to see them on a regular basis, the children are welcome to go with him. It's made me feel anxious now of moving into the yard. 
it's like they've got a problem with me before I even got there. They're not going to give me a chance, are they? I think I'm best off staying, get a site in my own community, in my own culture, my own environment. It's not right. <laughs> Today is eviction day in Nuneaton, and the group of traveller families are refusing to move from the council car park. Nuneaton Council employs an enforcement company to handle their traveller evictions, and today, agents Darren and Patrick are on duty. They have a 100% eviction record and are keen to keep it that way. Our main objective is to get home safely at the end of the night with zero violence and zero damage to property. We've done a good job. It's their culture. They travel, set up camps, and we move in this. Nothing's going to stop that in England, and we have to do it. Patrick is meeting with council officers and local police in a car park opposite the encampment. First of all, I'll go in there by myself and I'll speak to them. They'll know um, who we are, and I've dealt with them on a quite regular basis. I always go in by myself and say, try and do the charm offensive first. If you turn up in a group, it's almost like pack mentality, and then they will confront a group with a group. I like them to see that I'm leaving everybody behind that as there. The crew holds back with Darren, allowing Patrick to speak to the group on his own. You know exactly what the crack is. You know my job better. You know my job better than me. Oh. He said he hopes you have a beautiful day and hopes everyone is OK over here. These guys are very aggressive and just told me to F off. The problem is most of the guys that are there are under 25 and have something to prove and they would love a fight right now. And there's two vans there with caravans hitched up so they are preparing to go. But they want to show us that they are in charge and we will go by what they say. There's so many young pups there and then he doesn't want to lose face in front of them all. So now that they all, they all, they want to fight, they're going to go for you. Um, they, they hit you, yeah, and they will go for you. They want to show that they are in charge. So they're, um, they're trying to give us conditions to do what they want. They said that they're not going to move if you're filming them when they go out. I'm going to leave, yeah. probably, and that, well, that makes stuff easier for you. I think just keeping out of their way and letting them go on, uh, we need a lot more police, um, a lot more. Back at the house, <laughs> Andrea is worried what the neighbours will think of Johnny's new pet. Yeah, so basically what he's done, he didn't want to like bring it in the horse box, so what yeah. he's done is he's walking it from the site down the lane and he's going to bring it up round there. Yeah, I'd say this is going to be a first for this road. Johnny's just completely oblivious to it all. He's just like, yeah, I'll just put the horse in the garage. You're going to get people moaning, but people moan about everything. Yeah, it's too hot, it's too cold, there's a horse in the garage. No matter where you put me, I'm still a traveller man at the end of the day, and that's it. And I'll never ever change, never. You're going to need a lot of air fresheners, I know that. <laughs> I'd love someone to come here walking a dog or something and say, What are you up to? I say, Well, you're walking your animal, I'm walking mine. <laughs> All right, mate. Do what? Ah, oh, she's mine, I'm taking her own. Oh, yeah. No, no. She's <laughs> taking her own. Yeah, all good, mate, yeah. All right? Cheers. You probably think, what's going on here? <laughs> you are a raving lunatic, John. God. Yeah, let's put her in here. Do that door, that bush. People might be the only people who have a horse in our garage. I suppose they've got lawnmowers or cars and that in a minute. I don't think you find many more up here with all of them. People must be thinking, what are they doing? Johnny and the boys may be enjoying themselves, but Andrea's a little more self-conscious. Because I'm from the set of the so I do worry what people think. People going past us looking at us, so I don't think it's going to be long really before the people get here and uh, start complaining. In Essex, English traveller Johnny and his family have moved on to a residential street 
and they brought Mary along with them. It's created quite a stir amongst their neighbours. She's just got to get used to it, her, isn't it? She's going to be here for a while, so uh, I think that'd be all right, brother. But Andrea is not convinced. I'll give it, I reckon, by tomorrow morning before we get someone here complaining. <laughs> It's just such an unusual sight, of, you know, on the main road. <laughs> what fascinates me, though, is there any law against it? Oh, you're going to be notorious. All right, how are you doing, mate? Right? Right? Brilliant. Do you like horses? Yeah, yeah. Oh, like yeah, yeah. John Gay. Right. Ken. 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 My brother's live, John. Do you live oh, around here? Right. Yeah. Oh, right, I haven't seen you before. Yeah, no, I'm Graham's mate. I live over oh, the back. Oh, right. What's your name? Mary, Mary. 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 Yeah. yeah. Can you do this then? I don't, I don't know whether really you can do it or not, really. We'll find Listen, out, we'll I don't know, we just want to make sure she's looked after. You know, yeah. Cold and that. It's oh, all right, if I bring my granddaughter over. Of course it is. She's yeah, she's right. right. And all that, you know. She's okay, no problem. Oh, I think it's marvellous. Yeah. Well, you look settled in, Mary. To be honest, I'd rather have that than a yappy dog or something. What harm can it do? Despite Andrea fearing the worst, the neighbours aren't batting an eyelid. I should imagine everybody's going to be fine with it. I say yeah, each to their own. What you do within your walls is up to you. The toothbrush. There's the brush and the broom. In case you, no. case you want to get to the back of him. <laughs> Thank you. Having a horse, I like the idea. I would like one myself. But as you see, I ain't got a lot of room. Everyone seems fascinated by it for some reason. <laughs> Move over, boys, so I can see the horse. Come here, boys. Here. Yeah. Facebook it. You ready? I'll see the horse. That's it. Oh, hang on, Jack, you get in. That's it, you're all in. Hey. Can't really see the horse, can only see you lot. <laughs> no matter how we try to dress, whatever we do, we stick out like it's all fun, basically. But we're not all bad. Give us half a chance. No matter whether you're traveller next door or gorger next door, talk to somebody and find out if they're a nice person or not. That's all you have to do. So I see it. Back in Nuneaton, Patrick and Darren are surveying the damage left behind now that the traveller group have moved on. They have wrecked this film, mate. I wouldn't wish this on anyone. Mate, there's human shit over there. It really? There is, and um, we spotted it. Reading the situation, it was hostile. So we left them to it. You know, they went peacefully. Um, no one's hurt, but um, there's a lot of cleanup that's going to have to occur. There's a large amount of caravans I've been on this, so the soil's churned up. Unfortunately, they have taken the, the goalposts um, off the football pitch. This is normal. This happens up and down England every day. It will be cleaned up, and hopefully, kids will be able to use the park again. Then we'll see them next week, probably. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> With public access open again, local resident Arthur is taking a look for himself. That is a lot of mess. Pallets up there, mats and carpets. Do you know what I'm saying? This ain't from the caravan, this is from the back of the van. I don't know what to say. I really, I really am shocked. A bunch of sods, no need for this. This has the look of arrogance. It says, sod you. That's what this says. I'm going to do what I want and leave you to clean up the mess. Look at it. How do I see things from their point of view? And this is what we're up against. We've got to pay for this. It's got to come out of my pocket as a resident. My pocket. Nice one. I don't know. Carol and her family are decent people. You know, I reckon I could rock up to their caravan any old flipping time and have a cup of tea with them and a chat and put the world to rights. But this lot, nah. Nah. And I need to sleep. I need to wake up. I need to wake up. Back in Cambridgeshire, Carol and her daughter are out looking for the next place to move to. 
You see here, as you can see, they've been digging it all out. That is because travellers have stopped here. They've put them there so no one else can pull in there. Now see, this here, this is where we've stopped. And as you can see, the big ditches they've made. Despite Carol having stopped here numerous times before, it's clear that the travellers are no longer welcome. They put a big hole in the ground there, look, so no one can get in it. Why do that? It's a bit mud, isn't it? We can obviously just get shovels and just shovel it in. See, it doesn't take long, does it? Look, dig it over. It didn't take long. And this is what they're trying to do up here. They're trying to stop all the travellers from coming back because of the villagers moaning about it too much. I mean, come on, look how far the houses are away. Are we disturbing them like from over here? Like three fields over. It is getting harder and harder and it's getting more stressful. But where do they expect you to go? This bit of ground now goes to waste. We just have to do some more breaking and entries, I suppose. I don't want to do it, but if this is what's forced to be happening, I mean, what, can, what else can I say?